Hey everybody, it's Jochen Hyden, and I'm back with the Lodric vs. Hyden campaign. This is scenario one with no mods. We are now in the 24th of November. November? How about March? 24th of March, 1942. Wow, I can't read. Okay, we're back. This is Helsin versus Hyden. Wait, no it's not. This is Lodric versus Hyden. Uh, 24 March, 1942. Alright, he grabbed a, do uh, a dot base over there near... um. Somewhere in the Duchess Denny's, I missed it. Near Sarong? Hmm. Galea. It's near turn 8. Galea. Mm, okay, the Chester made it to Numea safely. That's good. Okay, no night bombing this turn. Okay, no subactivity yet. No, some Coast Watchers. Pretty quiet so far. Naval movement. Okay, we're in the AM phase. Let's see if we spot some ships here. Aha! Uh -huh. I saw that. Wow, you seeing that? Oh, hey, we hit a sub. Maybe. Okay, our ASW stuff. Okay, look at this. So he's sending a lot of bombers. In the, in the Chi Kiang. For whatever reason, my, my fighters aren't flying. Maybe I told them not to? Well, this is kind of bad. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do that. I don't know why I did that. If I'm not going to have them flying, they need to not be there. Shoot. I messed that up. Alright, so he's attacking us now from Canton as we retreat to our next defensible hex. Um, we're going to do a little better off this time because the terrain is shielding us from the bombing. Uh, but it's going to slow down our troops. All these guys are going to get knocked out of move mode. And this will probably be more the same. Okay, minimal casualties due to the good terrain, but it's going to slow us down. And this was what I was worried about. A bombing attack on this clear terrain hex here. Yeah, see these losses? I was really worried that this was going to happen, but I, I need... I have to do this to... You know, to execute the next part of my plan. So we're going to just gonna have to sit out here and bear the brunt of these bombing attacks. And again, we're going to lose more aircraft on the ground because it was stupid for me to not move them out. Yeah. Okay. One thing that is helping us here north of Siam is the, the weather in the hex is very bad. So we're taking losses, but they could be worse if the weather wasn't thunderstorms. I knew he was going to do this. I knew that he would focus this unit down with tons of bombers. The train sucks for us here. Oh, no. Who ordered these guys to go in? Oh, man. I need to, I need to do a better job about policing up my orders like this. Uh, looks like two of these guys were shot down here. I, I need to stop these guys bombing because they didn't do anything and I just lost two aircraft for nothing. Man, you would think after all these, a year of playing this game that I wouldn't be making stupid mistakes, but I am. Still. And that's why Lodra capitalizes on my stupid mistakes. Alright, PM phase here. Spotting some stuff. Okay, now we're having a raid on Catherine, and these are aircraft that are in Darwin. Flying down. Okay.
Val's guy and attacking these guys north of the Val. Sally's out of uh, Balak Poppin, hitting these troops trying to retreat. A lot of losses there, jeez. We're going to need to start getting these guys evacuated as quickly as possible. Okay, well, I mean, it was bad in China, but it could have been worse, I guess. Ugh, you gotta be kidding me, man. Get out of here. Whatever. Stupid rowboats, man. I can't stand these things. They're just everywhere. Who puts a sub here? L look where it's at. This is such a silly place to leave a sub. Well, this AKL is dead. Give me a break. God, I hate subs. I hate subs in this game so much. Well... The AKL Quang Tong. I hate Quang Tong too. I don't like them either. Uh, this ship's a goner. Whatever. Stupid rowboats. I can't wait to play Japanese. My, my, my um, subs are gonna do this stuff too, right? I actually, <laughs> for a moment when I saw this amphibious assault on Vava U, I, I like, my heart skipped a beat. Right, but then I realized this is the Lodric campaign, not the Helsing campaign. In my Helsing campaign, I got that place built up really nice, but here, I haven't done anything with it, so, okay. All right, here we go, land combat. Let's see how, let's go here. Uh, oh, wow. Holy moly. Look at all of this. He had all of this left on top of the rest of it? Oh, we are so done. I can't believe he had this many troops in reserve in Sion on top of that. We're finished. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> I don't even want to look. This is Lodric's endless supply of troops, man. He never runs out of troops. Ever. Wow. Okay, well. Well, okay. That's not that great. Um, the numbers aren't so bad, but the, the amount of destroyed squads is really going to hurt me because I don't get a lot of these guys back. Not right away, anyway. This definitely was not worth the trade at all. Like, this whole thing ended up being a complete failure. Well, these guys are dead. What? Oh, okay. They are dead. All right. So we lost the core, the core headquarters, because they didn't follow the rest in, because that makes sense, right? All right, so this is going to be kind of a big deal, guys. I want to think my troops can hold out because I had less troops on in Luganville, I feel like. Yeah, okay, so we, we did okay here. Well, actually, we did very good here. Um, yeah, so we easily repulsed this attack. Our losses are not too bad because they're just disabled and not destroyed. So... So far, so good at, at Pago Pago. Pongo, Pango, Pango, whatever it's called. Um, I think he's going to ha have to whittle us down for quite a while there. <sighs> yep, four to size three on top of that. That's good. It's going to make it even harder for him now.
He's finishing up the turn here. I'd love to get some reinforcements. I need some ships. I need planes. I need everything right now. Oh, thanks. Point hole squadron, huh? Oh, there it is. I, I'm not too happy with this turn. China, again. Well, welcome to my latest disaster. Can't seem to do anything right anymore. Let's take a look at this. It's a bad day. Aircraft losses today. Um, five for us, two for him. Completely regrettable and avoidable. These aircraft destroyed on the ground should not have happened, and it's my fault. Uh, these SB3s should have been called off, and I didn't, so these were wasted. We lost a DC-2, a Nell, and a Mavis. Well, I didn't. I lost a DC-2. He lost a Nell and a Mavis, so two to five. Of those five aircraft lost, two pilots were killed. The army lost points for this turn was a disastrous 74 for us versus four for the Japanese. And this is due to my China failure. I got straight baited. Ship sunk this last turn. Uh, <laughs> we lost the Quang Tung. I wish we could lose the, the Quang Tung army. I'd like to lose that. Uh, but unfortunately, the only Quang Tung that got lost was this one here. Um, yeah. For the turn, the Japanese gained 119 additional points, bringing their win ratio up to 1.851. Not so great. So, I reviewed the combat report. I'm not seeing any signs of a desync or anything like that. Everything is here as reported elsewhere well, during the replay. So, uh, there is something I do want to show you guys. So, and this is kind of a huge problem. It's a ginormous problem. And I was, I would, let's just say I was close. My prediction was close. Look at this. This is very, this is a big deal. You ready? Okay. See this? Mole mine. Mole mine. Mole mine. Mole mine. Mole mine. We know where uh, Lodric is going now. He is moving his troops to Mole mine. I counted four divisions in one tank regiment so far. Uh, and there could be more coming than that, but that's what's reported on this SIGINT report. Let's take a look at what that means. So, all of the troops that Lodric has down here at Langsa and Georgetown, at least a significant portion of them are moving to Mole Mine. And what he's trying to do is cut off my troops that are already down here and prevent me from uh, prevent me from pushing any further into Thailand. So he's going to land here and then he's going to drive up for the Burma Road. So it does appear that he is doing a belated Burma push it looks like it's kind of late, but I guess it's not too late to be disruptive uh, That means that Ceylon is probably not going to be invaded which is good for me, but It means that I have a lot of troops out of position here, but before I get too far into that. Let's just Let's finish up with my normal flow. Okay, but just now we know here He's going to mole mine And that's gonna be his last big push for for April and Phoebe's bonus ends Op support, uh, a lot of stuff, nothing super important, but one thing I do want to point out is that, and this is good for me, Pago Pago expands fortification to size 3, and that's a good thing for me because down here at Pago Pago, right, he just landed four naval guard units, and we just had a battle here, and we did relatively well, but now we have a uh, fort level of three as opposed to two. So subsequent battle should be even better for us. And it's going to require him to expend a lot more time and energy and effort to take this base. So that's good for me. Let's go ahead and just talk about the turn because so many other bad things happen besides our new SIGINT. Um, down here or up here near Sion, this whole operation of mine ended up being a complete and utter failure. So I got straight baited here. Lodric left me some some dangly little 
uh, stuff here. I went and took the bait. I sent a lot of troops down here. And we destroyed his armored car unit. But I completely underestimated the amount of troops that he had still in Sion. I just am flabbergasted by the sheer number of troops that Lodric has on the map. It just seems like there's never-ending troops. 150,000 here, 500,000 there. It just seems like, like there's no end to the amount of troops that the Japanese have. And I just can't believe it. Uh, Lodric has more troops in Sion than he had up here. So what he did was he shock attacked because they have superior logistics to me and can seem to move on anything. He shock attacked across this river and just blasted us out. And that's why we took so many losses. Hundreds of destroyed squads. So now all I did was trade thousands of Chinese troops for one Japanese armored car unit. It was not a good trade. This was a horrible idea. Nothing worked the way I wanted it to. We can't even encircle this unit down here now. Because he took out the units that were moving up here to do that. So this was just a complete and total failure. Uh, a huge tactical error on my part. And I have no good excuse for it other than I'm not observant enough. Or I'm taking too many risks. So now all I've done is impair my position here. And give him a lot of extra points that I didn't need to give him. So this was a bad, bad operation here. So over here, uh, in the central part of China, um, it does appear that Lodric is hooking a right to go towards Ai Chang. It does not appear that his troops are going west, but that doesn't mean anything. Maybe I just have bad detection. But he's definitely in chase for this unit, so hopefully they start moving a little bit faster. They need to get out of the way. Uh, meanwhile, though, we do have a new position built here, and it's very strong. And I've got more troops coming into Chukyong every day. You see all these troops in move mode? Well, I'm about to put them into combat mode. And that leaves us with a lot of engineers. So we're going to start terraforming this place into a larger fortification. I am confident with that amount of engineers and the amount of additional troops that are coming into the hex over the next few turns. We can stop them cold right here indefinitely. And here. So we've stopped them up here. Which means that this is now the weak point, which I'll be shifting troops this way to kind of block the advance if he goes to I Ching and tries to flank around. Uh, this is good terrain for us to defend, and I think we can hold that. Down here, our position is starting to form up. We have a couple units that are still kind of moving, but the bulk of our troops are in position down here. So we have 2,000 in that hex and an additional 1250 moving in, probably within, oh, I don't know, maybe two turns. And after that, we will have a good position built here on times three terrain. If we take a look here, we're already working on forts. So uh, I feel like we've temporarily stopped Lodric's main advance in this part. I think we've fallen back to positions that we can actually hold for a while. And yeah, there we go. So Burma is not so great uh i am very badly overextended now so uh what needs to happen here is i'm gonna have to give up all these gains and start falling back to mole mine pegu rangoon because i know that lodric has multiple divisions now packed up and moving towards uh mole mine i expect to see i expect to see ships in the andaman sea within a turn Probably by next turn, they'll be kind of in here and within range of my PBYs. Of which I have a sufficient amount to spot. So what does that mean for me? All of these troops need to fall back and will probably be out of position well, well before Lodric lands here. He can land here within two to three days. My troops are going to take a couple weeks to fall back. But I think I want to take all these troops and give up all these bases and fall back. Uh, maybe to Tungi or cross over through Pegu, something like that. And maybe kind of rebuild our lines further up. Because if Lodric wants to continue driving north to cut the Burma Road, I'd like to have troops in place. So we've got about, mm, let's see, 340, 800, uh, about 1400 AV here. We've got more there. So we have quite a bit of troops coming down here. So if we build a line near Magway 
Mike Tila, something like that. I think we can stop any forward advances of the uh, Japanese up in the deep Burma. And then Rangoon has quite a few troops in it too. And some really good fortification. I think we'll be able to hold the Rangoon for a while. Plus I have more troops making their way down, right? I've got AA regiments. I've got uh, artillery, AT guns. All kinds of stuff coming in. So I feel like our position in Rangoon will be okay. We should be able to hold against uh, the Japanese for a while. A couple considerations here is that we just spotted this task force here. It's showing one heavy cruiser and some escort ships. I don't know how accurate this is. It says it's moving east. East is this way. I don't know if I buy that or not. We have four ships here at Port Blair moving northeast, which is in the direction of Rangoon. So what it appears to me is that Lodric may be moving possibly to cut off any ships that I want to send from Colombo from getting into Rangoon. He may be trying to take up position in here. Now, we do have plenty of naval search uh, at Rangoon and Colombo to, to keep eyes on that stuff. But it's definitely a concern. So here, follow me here. Lodric is going to land this way. And you can bet there's going to be carriers and bombardment task forces. All that crap is coming. You guarantee it. Uh, he's going to try to come up here and cut reinforcements this way. And maybe send these guys over here to try to cut reinforcements this way. That's my guess, but the next turn I think we'll get a lot better visibility of what his plan is here. But he is definitely going for an invasion of Molmine. He's going into Burma and Thailand. He's trying to cut off all of these troops here. Okay. And then he'll try to drive and cut the Burma road. Better late than never, I guess, is his, mo is his motto with this one, right? Uh, he should have done this months ago, but it, he still has a lot of troops that we have to deal with. And if he is successful in cutting the Burma road, it will help him in his goals here. In China because a lot of my supply is coming from the Burma Road actually most of it is uh, we are aided by the fact that we are maintaining our our uh, defense up here and we still have land shell giving us fuel to keep the heavy industry in Chongqing going but more supply comes from uh, Suyong and the Burma Road being open than it is coming from Chinese uh, industry so the next few turns are going to be pretty wild here as far as the situation in Burma. All eyes on Burma for the next little bit. Not much to talk about in Mindanao. We had that unit that was attacked and blown out here. And this is all we have left. And these guys are dead. Absolutely dead. Okay. Down here in... Uh, northern Australia, just by Darwin. Lodric's troops are now one hex north of Catherine, so it is time to pack everything up and get out of town. Everything's got to go. So as you can see, I've got stuff moving, but they're not moving fast enough. So we need to get going a lot faster than this. This poor cavalry brigade is on its last legs. They've got literally 185 troops left out of a starting TOE of this. This unit has just been absolutely decimated. All right. And then we're going to continue to basically give up all these bases up here. And we're going to draw our next line of defense at Tenant Creek. All right. So let's talk about Rabal. A lot of activity here. Um, got a lot of ships still coming in. A lot of patrol boats. Don't really know what the, what he's trying to do here, but it's been pretty stagnant on the Papua side of things. It's probably okay for me to tell you now, uh, we will be landing in Milne Bay next turn. I got troops coming in, and we're going to start building this base up to get it ready for future offensive operations on Rabal and the Solomons and all that other stuff. Because we really need to have Port Moresby, Milne Bay, all these bases up here are important towards that goal. So I'll be looking to expand these to have another base of operations to both launch ships from and aircraft from to to reduce Rabal. And the reason that I really want to target Rabal is I believe this is the head of the snake. Uh, Rabal is the forward location for him to supply to Loggi, Luganville, and all this nonsense going on in Fiji and in the Samoa Islands, right? All that stuff's got to come out of Rabal. It could be coming from truck, but it makes more sense for it to come out of here. So if we can start really damaging Rabal with 
heavy airstrikes, uh, hit and run things, you name it. I feel like we could get to the point where we can damage Lodric's ability to supply this logistical nightmare that he's creating for himself and make it so it's easy for us to cut it off, isolate it, and and pick it off later on. That's my goal uh, right now with all of this. All right, so uh, as you can see, he's doing a great job uh, finishing off all these islands up here. He's going to grab basically everything he can. And he's at Paco Pago, but he landed a bunch of Naval Guard units, and we have seen time and again his Naval Guard units not being able to get the job done, at least not in a quick time frame. So we still have quite a bit of troops alive here, okay? We have a lot of supply, and we also have fortification that's very strong. So, and on top of that, we have times two terrain, the Pago Pago's jungle terrain. So I think we can hold out here for a while. I'd like long term, Pago Pago's dead. But in the, eventually, he'll take it. But we can we can hold it off for a while. And that's just going to frustrate things. The crane will be available in a turn. But I don't know if we're going to be able to get it out of the hex in time. With his unit just sitting here guarding it. So I'm hoping I can save this destroyer. But if I can't, it's just a Wix class. And it's not overly important to me. I would just like to save it just as a matter of principle. So yeah, that's the turn. Um, kind of a, a huge problem we're dealing with now. Uh, so we know that Lodric is going for an invasion of Molemine. At least right now. Could be more, but this, this is starting to make a lot of sense. Which is going to trap all these British troops and such out of position. So I'm going to be scrambling to get them back into position. And then he's going to go for Rangoon, and we'll see how that goes. So uh, I do want to say this last thing here. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes in this campaign. Now, this is my first ever play by email. Uh, now, I've learned a lot since I started, but I'm still new, and I'm making a lot of mistakes. And a lot of these are, are strategic and tactical errors, right? I've had a few misclicks and game-related errors, which I think anybody's prone to that but I'm making some big picture errors here and I'm and I'm still learning to see bigger than than little isolated gains right this whole thing in Thailand would have been much better if I had just taken all these troops and left them in mole mine right I would have had 2000 plus AV here with big forts and everything we probably could have even repelled the invasion but now with all of these troops out of position there's no way that I'm going to be able to stop him landing here. And we're going to take heavy casualties when he eventually forces us out. Unless we just give it up and fall back to other positions right now. Which I'm going to explore doing. But I don't know if we can get out of town in time. Because of the retreat mechanics in this game being so stupid. Um, when he does defeat me here. He's going to cause way more casualties than if I just let him have the base. And fall back to a stronger position. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about here. It's not even attempting to defend Molemine because I can't take the troops, save them, and get them back into Rangoon where we have much better um, uh, forts, more supply, more support, more everything. So we can put up a much better stand if that's where he wants to go. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about here. We'll have to see how it goes. Um... Go ahead and give it to me. Go ahead and tell me how dumb I am and how many mistakes I've made and all this stuff. That's fine. I'll listen to you, but you have to understand I'm not an expert at this yet. I'm still learning, so just go easy on me, all right? Catch you on the next one.